Hi, welcome back to Phil 320 Deductive Logic. I'm Professor Matthew J. Brown, and today we're starting Unit 4 on proofs in SL. And we're going to be talking specifically today about the basics of proofs and uh, the rules of what we call direct proof. All right, so um, let's get into it. First, let's start off with the question of what is a proof? You know, what does that term mean to you in everyday language? Think about it for a second. Where have you encountered it? You might have encountered it, say, when someone asks you to provide proof of something. That means to provide some evidence, right? Or, um, and that's certainly how we mean it in a court case, when we say we're going to prove something beyond a reasonable doubt. We're going to provide a certain amount of evidence, right? But what does it mean in formal logic? That's what I really want to get down to. Formally, a proof, like an argument, is just a sequence of sentences, right? The first sentences of the sequence are the premises, and these are given at the beginning. Every sentence later in the sequence after those premises is derived from earlier sentences by one of the rules of the proof system that we use, right? The final sentence of the sequence should be the conclusion of the argument. Proof is crucial concept for deductive logic. Um, it's what we mean when we say deduction, right? It's a certain kind of process of derivation. Proofs are another way of showing the validity of an argument. Now, we can already do that with truth tables, right? So if we have a simple argument like this, if A then B, A therefore B, you know, we can give the truth table here, right? Um, and we can show everywhere in the truth table that the premises are true, the conclusion is true. That tells us this argument is valid. But there's something pretty intuitive about the argument that the truth table doesn't really help us understand. It doesn't help us understand why this argument is valid and others aren't. It's kind of a brute force way of showing it um, without really explaining it. Also, remember, this is a simple truth table, but truth tables get exponentially larger and more complicated as the number of sentence letters we're dealing with increases. If we have two sentence letters, we only have four lines in the truth table. If our, if our argument has three sentence letters, then we have eight lines. If it has four sentence letters, we have six lines. And if it has only 10 sentence letters, we're already up to 1,024 lines, right? Proofs, by contrast, can get at the underlying reasoning involved in an argument and help us understand why the argument is valid, uh, and sometimes with less uh, complication or less, less you have to lay out unless you can possibly get wrong um, in a large truth table. In this class, we use an approach to proofs called a natural deduction system, right? There are different kinds of deductive proof systems um, for logics like sentential logic or SL. Um, but in a natural deduction system, every connective has two rules associated with it. It has an introduction rule that allows us to prove um, a sentence with that as the main connective. So for example, the conditional introduction rule allows us to prove a sentence with a conditional as the main connective as the conclusion of our argument. Every connective also has an elimination rule. It has, allows us to prove something given a sentence with it as the main logical operator. So every connective has an introduction rule or an elimination rule that helps us derive or derive from that rule. The book introduces all of the rules together, um, but today we're just going to talk about the simplest rules, rules for what we call direct proof, and we'll learn what that means a little bit later. First, let's look at how our proof notation works. We use something called a Fitch proof uh, notation, and the one we use has this sort of guidelines on it, right? A sort of vertical line uh, on the left side and a horizontal line. Um, above the horizontal line are the premises of our argument. To the left of the vertical line, we number all of the sentences in our proof, right? Um, everything under the line is a kind of intermediate step, and the last line of the proof is our conclusion. To the right of every line in our proof, um, with the exception of the premises, we write the rules that are allowing us to write down that line. So 
let's start this one simple rule. The only rule that's not connected to any connective is the rule of reiteration, right? Um, so here is an example of applying the rule of re reiteration. We have uh, on line one, we have uh, a simple atomic sentence A. Um, on line two, we can reiterate A on another line. And our rule is uh, is abbreviated R with one as the line number that um, we are applying the rule to, right? Reiteration is a very simple rule, almost seems too simple, but we will see it's useful under certain conditions when combined with other rules. Now, this is just an instance of the rule of reiteration. When we, when we write the rule itself, we have to use some metavariables. You'll remember metavariables um, we used in uh, previous units, right? Um, so I use here the script, sort of scripty A, to stand not for a sentence letter A, but any sentence, any arbitrary sentence of SL. Um, the M here is a line number, could be any line number. Um, and uh, you see here that the reiteration rule allows us to write the exact same sentence, whatever it is, um, as long as we write the rule R and the previous line that that sentence was on, M. Let's look at some other of our, um, of our rules of direct proof. You can see how this plays out, right? So the next one I want to mention is conjunction introduction, right? Um, this is the rule that allows us to derive a, con a conjunction, right? Um, and if on some arbitrary line earlier in the proof we have uh, a sentence A, and on the line N we have a sentence B, we can derive A and B using the conjunction introduction rule um, referring to lines M and N. Um, now, M and N don't have to be right next to each other. They don't have to be right above the line where I am writing down the conjunction. They just be anywhere up in the proof earlier, right? Um, this will make more sense perhaps when we look at some examples, but I want to introduce you to the rules first. Um, we also have an elimination rule for conjunction that tells us if we have a conjunction, A and B on a previous line, um, we can derive either A uh, or B, right? Both of those are valid applications of the conjunction elimination rule. Um, now, again, I wanna remind you, script A and script B are metavariables that stand for, could be very complex sentences. All, that's, all that matters here is that the conjunction, the and, is the main connective for this sentence, right? We have a disjunction introduction rule, right? That tells us, Whenever we have a sentence, we can in, we can introduce a disjunction. Um, it doesn't matter which order uh, we put the A on. It could be the first or the second disjunct. Um, and B can be any arbitrary sentence, right? Um, you might think, well, why why can I introduce anything? That seems that seems crazy. But it's because you already have A, right? Because A or B is true. Whenever either A or B or both are true, if you already have A, you know the conjunction is going to be true. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Disjunction elimination is a little bit of a more complicated rule, right? Um, it requires not only that we have the disjunction, but also that we have the negation of one of the disjuncts, right? If on line M we have A or B, and on line N we have not B, we can derive a. And likewise, if we have A or B on line M and we have not A on line P, we can derive B. We also have a conditional elimination rule. We, I mentioned earlier how intuitive this is. Whenever you have uh, if A then B and A, you can derive B. That makes a certain amount of sense given the, the in the truth table, right, for conditional. Whenever A is a 1, B also has to have a one. Whenever A is true, B also has to be true. I'm not gonna tell you the conditional introduction rule yet because again, that's not a direct proof rule. That's what we call an indirect proof rule, which we'll talk about in the next lecture.
Biconditional elimination is also a direct proof rule. It works like this. Whenever you have the biconditional and one side of the biconditional, so if you have A if and only if B and A, you can derive B and vice versa. So let's look at some examples. Here I have a simple argument, relatively simple argument, and uh, I want to show you how we're going to prove it. And to do that, I'm going to uh, take us over to Carnap um, and show you how we write down proofs in Carnap. So what I'm going to do to demonstrate how you do proofs in Carnap is I'm going to head over to what I call the proof playground. And this I've assigned this to you in Carnap. So if you log in at carnap.io, you should be able to find this. And what this has in it, among other things, is a, a set of uh, reminders for how we generate connectives using the keyboard, what kind of sentence letters we can have, um, and also how we write the rules that justify our proofs. But what I want you to focus on right now is uh, the actual proof playground itself. This is going to allow us to write down proofs and check them for uh, validity. Okay, so let's go back to our um, to our problem and see we've got uh, again if a then b or c a and not b as our premises right so I'm going to put those in uh, if a then b or c and to mark a premise a premise we use this colon pr says that's one of our premises okay uh, a was also one of our premises and so was not b um, and that's all the premises. And you can see over on the right how Carnap has nicely sort of formatted it for us based on what I put in with the keyboard. And what I'm trying to get is C, okay? And I look at what I've got. Um, I, I see that C is embedded there in, uh, in line one. Um, I also see that I've got everything I need for a conditional elimination. So I'm going to start there, right? I can derive B or C based on the uh, conditional uh, elimination rule using lines one, that's the conditional, and line two that has the antecedent in it, okay? Um, so that's, uh, that's a good start. Now I've got a disjunction, and it looks like I need to use the disjunction elimination rule to get that C out. And it looks like I have everything I need to do that as well. So I can derive C using the disjunction elimination rule on line four, which is our disjunction, and line three, which is the negation of one of the disjuncts. Okay, and that is an example of how we do a proof in SL. Here is another example of an argument I want us to try to prove. We can prove with direct proof. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Carnap. I'm going to reset the proof playground so I have a fresh uh, screen to move from. And uh, all I had for my uh, premises were A and B. And what I wanted to get, oops, I misspelled premise. All I want to get, what I want to get is this longer uh, sentence. Um, which I will write down here as um, A or uh, A or C and B or D, right? Now, obviously, or perhaps not so obviously, I'm not going to be able to get this directly, right? So um, let's see how I can use disjunction introduction to get the first part of it here, right? Let's. Think about how disjunction introduction works, right? All I need is to name the line that A appears on, and there I have the start of my disjunction introduction. Okay, I got it. Similarly, I can get B or D through disjunction introduction on line two, and now um, that I have both of the disjunctions, I can get A or C and B or D through conjunction introduction. Um, and conjunction introduction takes two lines, three and four in this case. And now you see I've proved A uh, and B validly imply this longer expression. Okay, let's look at yet another example. 
A if and only if B, A, therefore A and B. Let's see if we can do that in Carnap. I'm going to reset the proof playground again by reloading the page. And I've got the biconditional A if and only if B. That's a premise. And I have A. That's another premise. And then I want to get uh, the A and B, right? Well, I can get B through um, biconditional elimination on line one and two. If I have either A or B, I can get the other, right? And now that I have A and I have B, I can get I can use the conjunction introduction rule on lines two and three to get what I wanted to prove, right? So there is your valid proof of this argument. Before we wrap up, I want to talk a little bit about this language I've been using of direct and indirect proofs, right? Direct proofs, which is what we've seen so far, derive their conclusions from the starting premises using rules of introduction and elimination. The only things in a direct proof are the starting premises, the intermediate steps derived from those premises and from prior intermediate steps, and the conclusions similar, similarly so derived. So every line in the proof after the premises is derived via a specific rule. Indirect proofs, which is what we'll talk about in the next lecture, in one way or another introduce additional assumptions in the course of the proof. They're indirect in the sense that there are some lines of the proof that we don't directly derive from a, pre a prior line or, or set of lines. We'll talk more about what that looks like in our next lecture. Until then, I suggest you have a look over the first part of chapter six in For All X, and let me know uh, if you have any questions. Bye.